Fresh waters constitute an essential resource of our planet. However, they are rare and fragile. Less than 3% of the water on Earth is fresh water. And only 0.04% is in liquid form on the Earth's surface. Among this low percentage, there are lakes. The Earth has hundreds of thousands of lakes, but only a few hundred can be considered large. They offer drinking water and fish resources, but also many opportunities for economic development. Tourism, recreational activities, transportation, or again, use of lake water for cooling or heating. They constitute major biodiversity hotspots, but are also the receptacle of polluted water runoff from watersheds. Obviously, they play a central role in our daily lives, but are heavily threatened by human actions at global and local scales. Today, more than ever, focused attention is needed to better understand manage and of course conserve these important ecosystems and the services they provide Baikal, Lake Michigan, Lake Erie, Lake Vostok, Lake Geneva, Lake Ontario, Lake Superior, Lake Constance, Lake Tanganyika, Well, limnology is the study of inland waters. It started off uh, here at beautiful Lake Geneva, Le Lamont, uh, in the 19th century. At that time, it was described as the oceanography of lakes. And then since that time, it's broadened out to lakes, rivers, uh, perhaps even wetlands, sometimes estuaries. And it really tries to bring together all the different elements of uh, the natural sciences in the environment. So the mixing of waters, for example, the light in the water, uh, the chemicals that are dissolved in the water that are sustaining the food web, uh, the way in which that food web interacts, and finally the importance of human beings who are also part of lake ecosystems. We are here this week because we are organizing a fantastic symposium devoted to large lakes. And um, the focus of this uh, symposium is to try to present all different aspects of biology, chemistry, physics regarding these large lakes, key results, last results, and key issues that this ecosystem face, and uh, also have the opportunity that many researchers coming from different countries to mix together, discuss together, and make collaborations in the future. So I'm Lars Rudstam. I'm a professor at the university uh, in the United States, at Cornell University, upstate New York State. I'm Victoria Pebbles. I'm a program director with the Great Lakes Commission. So my name is Warwick Vincent. I'm a biologist at Laval University in Quebec City, Canada. 
So my name is Nathalie Scherf, I'm an ecotoxicologist. I'm a lecturer at the University of Lausanne and my main research topic is on the risk assessment of chemicals. I work with lakes from the largest lakes in the world, like the Great Lakes, to fairly small ones. And I'm interested in pretty much anything that lives and lives in lakes. Limnology uh, begins in the field with observations of lakes. So we have many instruments that we can lower down into the water to measure temperature, to measure oxygen levels, uh, to measure different other chemical properties of the lake. So all limnologists use different tools. One thing most of us have in common that do limnology on large lakes is boats. Some people use small boats, some people use very large boats. The boats I tend to use when we work on the Laurentian Great Lakes are tens of meters long when we are able to go out and uh, collect water samples and spend one to two weeks out on the lake. Of course, we're also very interested in the biology of the lake. So that involves using nets to bring up uh, animal plankton, zooplankton, and fish. Uh, it involves taking other samples to measure the microscopic life in lakes. And then, back in the laboratory, there is a galaxy of different methods that we apply to those samples, all the way from looking at the samples underneath the microscope to using DNA techniques to really ask the question, what's there and what is it doing? The uh, democratization of the tools of molecular biology, the ability of scientists, not in one institute, but many institutes, to be able to use DNA sequencing and RNA sequencing to study microbial communities, which is my interest, has been an amazing advance. We also have the opportunity to work with technologies that we may not understand ourselves. So I don't have to learn everything about genetics or chemistry or remote sensing. Instead, I can collaborate with people who understand those things very deeply. It is an exciting job. I love this job. It's a very exciting kind of work, yes. And every lake is, provides another set of surprises every day. I get paid to get up and think every morning. I've done other jobs and they're not as much fun. Um, I get to go into work and discover new things. Uh, I can work with people who are incredibly intelligent and equally passionate about understanding how lakes work and protecting the environment. I think one of the wonderful things about limnology is that it brings together specialists from different disciplines. We learn from each other, uh, we can collaborate all together, and we look in the same direction, trying to have a better idea of what is the functioning of these lakes and what will be the future for these lakes. We need to talk across the continents, across the Atlantic, across the world, about how to best understand and how to best uh, um, work with these large lake systems. We face so many environmental problems with climate change, pollution, uh, that we have to work together uh, to try to find solutions to get better data sets and to be able to analyze um, uh, these data at a worldwide scale. But in order to make a real impact, we have to bring in other voices. We have to speak with environmental groups. We have to speak with business and industry associations, sometimes the general public, sometimes the media, because these are a shared resource. We all depend on these Great Lakes. 40 million people depend on the Great Lakes for their drinking water alone. Water is so critically important to us as in, in society as a source of drinking water, in terms of food, and in, in terms of transport, in terms of 
uh, hydroelectric power, uh, and in terms of just the well-being and the, the, the aesthetic opportunity of seeing a beautiful lake such as, as Lake Geneva. So we have conservation on one hand and use and development on the other. Together, that is sustainable development. I think lake water management is a great challenge in the future. Uh, in fact, they are impacted by uh, anthropogenic activities like agriculture that release pesticides, nutrients, uh, by wastewater that release pharmaceuticals, cosmetics in, in these lakes. But when you look at the common stressors like climate change and invasive species and pollution from the, what's happening up in the landscape, those are common to all of these lakes. So symposiums like this allow us to share not only the science, but also how we can use that science to develop solutions. So when we talk about water quality, it's very important. And we know that these ecosystems are threatened every day by pollution and now by global warming. So we can imagine that in the future, scientists will be very important, but also policymakers and managers to try all together to find the best solution for everyone to use these waters, to profit of these waters, and uh, to enjoy these waters. Yes, so absolutely. Uh, uh, global change now affects everything we do. If we look at the projections for the end of the century, the changes in the Arctic, for example, are, are extraordinary. Even if we are able to hit the Paris Agreement, which we know is going to be tough, that 1.5 degrees Celsius at a global level translates into 3, 4, 5 degrees in the high latitudes. These are big changes. If we continue as business as usual, then we end up with plus 10, plus 12 degrees in the higher latitudes. That's a very different sort of planet and clearly there, there will be a major influence on our lake ecosystems. And again, the influence on winter is especially critical to understand. We know that the winter months are extremely sensitive, particularly those lakes that are cold at the moment, particularly those lakes that are ice covered. We think that winter could be very important in terms of setting the scene for the development of algal blooms, toxic cyanobacteria in the future. I think that people are beginning to appreciate the need for quality fresh water and protecting our fresh water resources. And I think that scientists with all sorts of backgrounds are coming to this field uh, to begin to help us understand how we can protect the environment and how we can um, best use and, and manage our water supplies. My job is, is concerned with making sure that science makes it into the hands of people who can use it to make decisions. People who work to prevent pollution, to restore degraded areas around the large lakes from pollution, from overuse, and other stressors. If I had to sum up what I think about this conference, I'd say that limnology is complicated and that we're learning from this conference that there's aspects of physics, aspects of chemistry, and aspects of biology that all come together to drive how lakes function. And that there's a really unique opportunity through these large international collaborations that we're seeing at this meeting um, to step forward and to be better stewards of our lakes in the future. This week has been a wonderful experience for all of us. I'm very proud of this community of scientists and thankful for the laboratory that have contributed to this symposium. I really hope we can continue to work together in the future. Thank you very much. It's going to continue to be a very important field I don't see any end to that. Water is extremely important for humanity and uh, human use, human well-being.